Hi, this is Joe Gailey. I want to welcome you to another one of our educational webinars. Today we're starting a new series. This is a first installment and the series is on your business and employees. What is your obligation to them and what kind of liability uh, might the business incur because of employee claims? Now in my 40 plus years of practicing law and accounting, I can't tell you how many times our clients and sometimes even other lawyers have told me that Georgia is an employment at will state or what some people refer to as a right to fire state and that employer can fire any person at any time for any reason or for no reason without liability. And that is an accurate statement of Georgia law. However, federal law overrides Georgia law and most of your liability, if not all of it, for employees and employment related claims arises under federal law. There are three major acts that we're going to be talking about. We'll have a separate segment on each one. One is the FLSA, the Federal Labor Standards Act. That governs uh, hourly employees, overtime, and various issues like that. We will have at least two sessions on that. The other is the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which forbids discrimination in the workplace based upon race, gender, national origin, religion, and of course that has now been expanded to, to include sexual harassment. We will have a separate installment on that. Finally, we have the Americans with Disabilities Act. That makes it mandatory that employers make reasonable accommodations for disabled employees. And we're going to talk about in, in a separate installment what that means and uh, how important it is to, to understand and have a good job description. But all of these acts, and there are many others that we're not even going to touch on, but all of these federal acts have certain things in common. Uh, one thing is that they provide that the owners of the business can be named as joint employers so that they can become individually liable for any damages due to the employee for violations. Now I know you're saying, well, I thought that's why I incorporated was to shield myself from liability for what my employees do. Well, that is why you incorporated, uh, but it doesn't work, at least not in this context. So not only can the individuals become liable, but also any brother sister businesses, other businesses that might be owned by the same people can become joint employers as well. Secondly, all of these provisions have an additional prohibition against retaliation. That is, if an, if an employee complains because of something they consider discriminatory in the workplace, you cannot retaliate against that employee. Now, I have a whole separate presentation about retaliation and what it is, but it doesn't necessarily have to rise to the level of termination. It can be something less to qualify as retaliation. Uh, thirdly, all of these federal acts provide that the employer has to pay the plaintiff's attorney fees if they are successful. And many times to, to small businesses, non-publicly held businesses, the attorney fees are the biggest risk. They can exceed the amount of the damages by, by many, many times. Uh, another thing they have in common is that all of these acts provide that it's mandatory that an employer conduct an internal investigation once they learn that there are allegations of discrimination or in the workplace or allegations of, of violations of F FLSA. In the workplace and that failure to do that can result in terrible consequences for them legally. We're going to have a whole presentation on internal investigations. So as we progress I hope that you'll listen take good notes and of course you can always listen to it three times if you feel the need to do so but I hope that this overview will kind of get you prepped to go into some of the deeper sections that are going to be coming up in later presentations. I appreciate you tuning in and we're looking forward to your tuning in to future presentations.